My name is Jess and I used to be on the fringe of an online new age spiritual cult run by a spiritual guru called Teal Swan. Mostly what I do on this channel is I want to talk about undue influence and help educate people in terms of how they can protect themselves against undue influence so that they can make their own minds up. Perhaps what was even worse for me than being on the fringe of an online cult was I was in two cults of two, meaning one-on-one -on -one abusive relationships where the person I was in a relationship with positioned themselves in such a way that they were akin to a cult leader. Both people wanted to shape me into the person they wanted me to be, and the problem with this is not just that it's wrong to do so, but the fact that both of those identities that they wanted to create were in conflict with the other. I was being pulled in, in kind of like a tug of war in two different directions while at the same time being influenced by Teal Swan. At the time of meeting these destructive influences, I was in a very vulnerable position in my life. In no way did I have any kind of education that would help me to be able to recognize the red flags that I should have been noticing so that I could protect myself. I, I didn't know what to look for and because it was a process of gradual coercion and persuasion that was used in a destructive way against me, there was nothing I could do to stop it. By the time I started to notice that things were different, that things were not going as I wanted, that I started to feel manipulated and confused, it was too late. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the little notification bell so that you can keep up to date with all of my future videos because there may be something that you want to see. So recently I was reading a book by Stephen Hassan, who is a leading cult expert, and it was uh, Combating Cult Mind Control. And in the book, a lot of things really stood out for me and I found really useful as ways to understand what I had actually been through. And there was a three-step model that was pointed out. It was by Kurt Lewin. And Stephen Hassan talked about it in such a way that made a lot of sense. So I want to go through this three-step mind control model because I wish that I had known about it earlier. I wish someone had taught me. I wish I had come across a video like this so that I could know what to look for. The process involves three steps and that's unfreezing, changing and refreezing. So I'm just going to get straight into it. Unfreezing. You can think of unfreezing as like breaking a person down. That includes the person's identity, their idea of reality, everything that constructs the person to be exactly who they are is torn down. Some of these ways of tearing a person down can be subtle. Some of them can be overt. But what they do is disorient you. The feeling you're going to have when someone is doing this is you're going to feel confused. You're going to feel like you don't know what ways up and what ways down. Obviously not literally, I'm, I'm sure that you literally know what way is up and down, but you're going to be somewhat confused. The lens through which you see the world is just going to be shattered. It's going to bring about a lot of doubt. You will feel like you're not able to really trust your own mind anymore because everything about your current reality is being shaken up and there are specific ways that these destructive influences do this. Pretty much why they do it is because if they can tear down your reality, if they can weaken your belief systems, if they can weaken your identity, then that automatically puts their positioning, their doctrine, whatever they want to construct you as, as being stronger than your position. It's basically a way of disarming you. The destructive influencer may use techniques such as sleep deprivation and drastic changes of diet. If you change someone's physiological habits enough, they're going to start to feel disoriented. Now it's not to say that changing your diet in general is wrong. People do it all the time. It's not that every health professional who tells you that you need to make some changes to your diet is saying something that is, is destructive. And it's not that changing your diet for ethical reasons is a bad thing either. It's the intention of the manipulator. It's the intention of the person doing it and it's how they go about it. There are certain extreme diets, such as really high sugar diets that keep you literally on a high, like fruitarian diets, which is one I was put on. 
um, where you eat only fruit. That is an example of an extreme diet change that no nutritionist would really recommend if they knew it was good for you. I'm talking about the kind of diets that go against scientific evidence that are known to cause trouble. Along with diet changes, there can also be fasting involved, and often there is, so be careful of that. Anyone who tells you to fast, please check in with your doctor first, make sure that you get a variety of opinions from different health professionals on the topic and get plenty of tests done. Hypnosis can also be used against you, because when you're in a trance state, you're more susceptible to suggestions. Now, being in a trance state isn't a bad thing. Again, it's something that happens naturally. It happens every day to everyone. If you've ever daydreamed, you've been in a trance. If you've ever zoned out, you've been in a trance. If you've ever been really tunnel visioned and just not being able to focus on anything but what you're doing, you're in a trance state. It's just a state of consciousness that is altered. But the destructive influencer will get you into a trance state for reasons that only serve their benefit, in ways that make it easier for them to manipulate you. So one thing you want to watch out for is confusion. If you talk to someone and you find yourself regularly feeling confused by the information that they're bringing forth to you, and you just have to like stop for a second or you wish that they would stop so you can just take a moment and really think about what they've just said, they may be using the strategy of confusion to put you into a trance state. It's especially obvious when there are two conflicting meanings or messages or statements being presented to you rapidly in a short space of time. And they're said in such a way that it's, it sounds congruent, but they're clearly conflicting messages. Your brain can't really comprehend that. It, it's too much for your critical mind to take. So it's spending all of this time in overdrive trying to understand how these two things can match up. And eventually your critical faculties just shut down, which is exactly what the destructive influencer wants for you. They want your mind, or at least your critical mind, to shut down. And it's in that state that you're gonna feel disoriented and you're going to then look to the leader or the destructive influencer for answers anything. If they say something that then makes some amount of sense that isn't contradictory, that follows this confusion, your mind will cling to that like, oh my god, finally something to hang on to. If you find somebody bombarding you with a lot of stuff, especially a lot of emotional words being used, loaded language, then that's a time where your red flag should go up too. This person may be trying to overstimulate you, overstimulate your mind and put you into a sensory overload, which again can put you into a trance state. Now, the same goes for sensory deprivation. If someone is taking away a lot of sensory stimuli, then that can also be a problem. There's a hypnotic technique called a double bind, and that one is used quite often to give you an illusion of choice, basically. If the person, say, wants you to fast, then they might give you this illusion of choice. So, do you want to fast for five days or for 10 days? Now, either way, the only options you have are to do with fasting. There is no option presented to you that is I don't want to fast, can I not please? There's no option for that. If you hear someone asking you questions that seem a little bit limited, take some time and just really think about it and don't be afraid to ask the person, well what about this other option that you didn't mention, can I do that? Just take some time, you don't have to answer someone straight away, it's okay to think about the question. Some other examples might include excessive chanting or excessive meditations or singing or anything that might shut down your critical faculties like that, anything including a lot of repetition. But just remember with all of this that it's always the intention that matters. Meditation, chanting, singing, they're all pretty nice activities, but it's just about what the intention is behind it. The destructive influencer will probably make you feel like something is wrong with you. They'll be nice enough to you to keep you around, but they will make you feel like you're defective and you just need to make some changes. So you might feel regularly insulted, you might feel as though something is, is inherently wrong or flawed about you. So after the person has broken you down and made you feel enough like that, so you're doubting and questioning yourself constantly, then they're ready to bring you on to the next step, which is changing. It, now it's in the changing step that you're basically being molded. Your identity is being replaced to fill in the void of doubt that you had before. And you start to take on more of the characteristics. It's kind of like going through training to construct a new identity. 
the destructive influencer will give you many solutions to the, the problems of corruption and the flaws that you had and they will give you these magical solutions. All you have to do is this. Okay, all you have to do is be this way. And they will basically move you in that direction as a way of moulding you. There are two ways to do this. There's an informal way of doing it, which is basically just through conversation and activities, things that don't seem like standard indoctrination, but they will still be indoctrinating you through the conversations and activities that they're having. Maybe they'll sit you down, get you to watch a video, uh, send you some cool articles, hey, read this. Um, but a formal way of indoctrinating might be actually presenting you with seminars or lectures or teaching sessions or anything like that, or therapy, some kind of therapy that, that can fix your problems. Now, I want to emphasize that when you're in a state like this, it's really, really troubling. I mean, no one likes to feel unstable. It's a difficult place to be. You feel like you're going through one identity crisis after another. You feel like you're having one existential crisis after another. The meaning of your whole world is, is constantly being tested. You don't know what's real anymore. You don't know if you're real anymore. You, it, it's the deepest questions that you keep asking yourself and you feel like you're going through transformation after transformation, but it's disabling you. It's something that, that is a clear sign of instability. You don't feel a sense of control within yourself. Your control is with the controller, which is not you in this case, it's the destructive influencer who is pulling the strings. And the destructive influencer wants you to become a clone of them, or maybe not quite as high as them, but similar enough. You might notice yourself suddenly going through radical personality changes and even your body might start to change too, especially if they're putting you on diets or fasting. What you surround yourself with might change as well. A lot of the things that you liked before may not even be considered okay according to this person. Repetition is really key. Apologies if I am repeating myself here, but it's only that there is a lot of repetition in the process of indoctrinating somebody, which is what they're doing. So the destructive influencer will repeat a lot of the same things that were in the unfreezing stage, in the changing uh, stage, and also in the next stage. They want you to believe that what they're teaching you, what their opinion is, is truth with a, with a capital T. They want you to believe that everything they say is true. And in my situation, I was actually told that by one of my destructive influences in a hypnotic state that everything he says is true. Now, the old you, the real you, the authentic you, that is going to be something that is pushed down often and just shunned. It will be implied that the things that you liked before, the things that will ground you in your, in your past self or remind you of who you once were are corrupt or evil or unenlightened in some way. For example, I really, really liked music and I still do. I love music. It's something that has always grounded me and made me feel better when I was emotional. And one of my destructive influences got me to fast from music, but I didn't do that straight away. It was, it was a bit hard for me to distance myself from music, but one of my favorite bands, he was able to influence me that they were trying to mind control me because they were part of a corrupt elite Illuminati system. Because I was eventually convinced that my favorite band was trying to do this to me, I fasted from them and all other music. Someone who was an avid music lover just never listened to music anymore. And I got to a point where I was quite happy to do so. I was quite happy to not listen to music. And and I didn't end up going to seeing a documentary in the cinema that I was looking forward to for months. I didn't end up seeing it because I just didn't want to anymore. And that's something that now I look back on and I'm, I just regret so much that I didn't do that. Because now I realize it was my destructive influencer trying to keep me away from things that would remind me of my authentic self. Music, especially my favorite band, anchored me in my past and my past was corrupt. So it was rejected and I rejected it as I rejected my old self. So once the changing process is complete, on to the next step. The next step is refreezing. In the process of refreezing, you're pretty much packaged as a new person. You're able to present yourself in that way, stable enough, so that you very, very rarely slip into your old self. And most people see you as a new person. You finally made it. You finally became 
part of the group or part of that relationship to the point where you are essentially the clone now. Even though you're the clone, you still have to be reminded of the dogma and all of the propaganda that the person wants to fill your head with, but it's it's going to be much easier for them to do so and you may even find yourself self-indoctrinating at that point. You're deceiving yourself and you're deceiving other people in this process. That's usually what happens and at least that's what I did. It gets to a point where you then start to share with other people what you feel has helped you. It's like being in love. You're in this high state of, oh my god, I've discovered the answers to life, to the universe, everything, it becomes something you just want to share with everyone. It's in the refreezing phase that you might end up with a new name. It's not always the case. I was given a nickname by one of my influencers that would remind me of a certain state that he wanted me to be in, which was very submissive, but it's not always obvious. New names don't always happen, but what will be clear is you will have a new identity. It doesn't completely, and it can't completely erase your authentic self. There is no way. It just doesn't happen because your authentic self is more so in the back seat. If you imagine it like a car, the self that is driving your car or your consciousness is the, the artificial cult you. What you surround yourself with will be different. Who you, who you choose to interact with will be different. How you choose to interact will be different. There will be a lot of things different about you. In my situation, it was complex because, like I said, I was in a tug of war between two people, so it's like I had two different identities being formed, and that was pretty confusing. I went through a radical um, identity change in two ways. One of them was like a lot of makeup and looking like a stereotypical sexualized woman, and the other was completely the opposite. It was like very modest and no makeup and uh, looking as natural as possible. But either way, the problem was that I didn't have the freedom to choose that. It, those were ideas that were forced upon me. One of the things that really stands out in this phase, you may look at your old self or your real self as being wrong or corrupt. It's like you have a sense of disdain for your past and the things that you used to like, even a sense of guilt or shame. Now, I want to make it clear to you that changing isn't a bad thing. Now, there are situations where a lot of people really do need to make some positive changes to their life, and there are people who want to help you do that, and there's nothing wrong with those people necessarily. It's all about your freedom of mind, it's about whether or not you're able to consent to these changes, and sometimes the changes that can be made will really be for your best interest, but you have to be the one to decide that. And not through coercion of some kind, not through any kind of destructive influence, but with your own mind being made up, if, you, if you're not sure what undue influence really is and how, do, how can I tell if someone's unduly influencing me or just trying to help, take a look at Stephen Hassan's Influence Continuum, which I have a video on, so I'll link the whole playlist of undue influence in the description. Also take a look at the bite model videos that I did, so behavior control, information control, thought control and emotional control, all from Stephen Hassan's bite model, which is basically the criterion for undue influence that we see in cults, including one-on-one -on -one cults. Thank you for watching this video, I'd really love to hear your thoughts, so please drop a comment below and give the video a like, and remember, a free mind is a well-educated mind.